Hello Year 3 and welcome to another reading lesson. Today's date is the 4th of March 2021 and our learning objective again today is to infer and our skill that we're going to be using again is inference. Let's look at a quick definition before having a, a bigger discussion about what inference means. Inference means finding and using clues to understand about a text. So we combine our clues that we find in the text with what we already know about the world, and we can come up with guesses or good ideas about what a text is trying to say. And the question, the key question we're going to use with this skill uh, today is what evidence is there that? What evidence is there that? And our success criteria to answer this type of question we can find the keywords in the text related to the question and then give information from the text that helps us to develop our understanding. Let's look at that poster again. Here it comes. Boom. So this is a poster you guys should all have in your head by now because it's the third time we've seen it. Inference is the process of making an educated guess about a text based on the clues it provides and our understanding of the world. So again, this is, we have two things that we combine to make our inferences. We use the clues from the text and uh, what we already know about the world. So let's look at a SATS question where this skill is necessary to help us to learn how to really get good at using this skill of inference. First, let's take a quick look at the question so we know what we're thinking about. What evidence is there that the school deserved to win? give two ways. So let's find out what this is all about. We have this article, a non-fiction article about a Grow Your Own Potatoes project. In 2005, the Grow Your Own Potatoes project was started. It was one of the first projects to encourage primary schools to grow their own food. Since then, it has become the largest of its kind with almost one million children taking part by 2010. In 2011, the winning school had a child on frost watch at the end of every school day. And if there was a chance of frost at night, they brought their pots of potatoes indoors. No wonder they were winners. So, we know that this, this school, the winning school, was successful. Why were they successful? Because if you remember the question asked, what evidence is there that the school deserved to win? So we have two facts here. Let's highlight the first one. At the, ev at the end of every school day, the school, the winning school, had a child on frost watch. So the child would go out and see if there was any frost. So that's one thing. And the second thing that they did, the child was on frost watch, and if there was a chance of frost, they brought the p pots of potatoes inside. So they were the winning potato growing school. And this is two pieces of evidence that support the idea that they deserve to win. So what evidence is there that the school deserved to win? The first way we spotted was that there was a child on frost watch every day checking for frost. And the second piece of evidence was if there was a chance of frost, the potatoes were brought in. So this is very good evidence to support the idea that this school deserved to win because they were working very hard to protect their potatoes from frost. So we are starting now on a new text. We're going to read a different fable from Aesop. This one is called The Dog and His Reflection. I remember reading this one when I was at school, and it's a very famous one. Um, we have been reading The Gnat and the Lion so far, but we're changing it today, and we're going to read The Dog and His Reflection. <clears throat> when Patch was young, he was a good dog. He was warm and soft and had the sweetest breath, and he licked the tip of your nose if you let him. And because he was so good, he was allowed to stay in the farm kitchen. The other farm dogs lived outside in a kennel. But just because a dog is warm and soft and good when he's a puppy, and licks the tip of your nose if you let him, it doesn't mean he will grow up like that. Once, when Patch was a fully grown-up dog, he pulled the cloth off the table, and all the family's dinner crashed to the floor. He had eaten it all up before the farmer's wife came running in. Bad dog, scolded the farmer's wife. He barked at the children and bit their legs when they rode their bikes. Bad dog, cried the children. He pulled up all the flowers outside the kitchen door, dug five holes in the lawn, and did his business in the farmer's hat. 
Bad dog, yelled the farmer. So Patch was sent outside with the other dogs, and because people only said bad dog to him, everyone forgot he'd once been called Patch. Now he was called simply Bad Dog. At feeding time, every dog had their own bowl of biscuits and scraps from the table, but Bad Dog would get to them first. He would growl and snarl and turn up his lips to show how sharp his teeth were. The other dogs had to wait, licking their mouths until Bad Dog had finished eating. When he had eaten all the meat and the gravy and all the dog biscuits from the bowls, all that was left was dry bread and carrots and broccoli, and lots of other things that farmers eat but dogs don't. But then one day he went too far. The smell of roast meat was wafting out from the kitchen. Bad Dog ran in, snatched the huge bone with the meat still on, and ran off with it. Bad Dog, screamed the farmer, running after him. Come back with that meat now or you'll never come back again. Bad Dog took no notice. This was a whole big bone with the meat still on, not scraps, and he wanted it more than anything. So Bad Dog ran away with it. He ran for a long time, until at last he came to a little bridge. This would be a good place to stop and eat his stolen dinner. He looked over the side of the bridge and had such a shock. Below him in the still water was another dog. A big, fierce, ugly dog, and this dog had a bone with all the meat on too. Bad dog had to have it. Two joints of meat. His lips turned back in a snarl, and so did the lips of the other dog. He opened his mouth to growl, and so did the other dog. And the bone fell from Bad Dog's jaws into the water and was taken away by the stream. It had been his own reflection in the still water he had seen, and now instead of two bones, he had nothing. Bad Dog felt sad. He had lost everything that was important. From now on, he said to himself, I shall try and be better. I shall try and be good instead of bad, and nice instead of nasty. Then one day, everyone will love me again. And that is what happened. If you are too greedy, he realised, it's easy to end up with nothing. Your assignment is four different inference questions. You just have to give one example of evidence for each of them. And the first one is, what evidence is there that the other dogs aren't as good as Patch? In the beginning of the story, what evidence can we find that suggests that the other dogs are not quite as good as Patch. Question two, what evidence is there that the farmer's family had gravy, carrots and broccoli for dinner? Question three, what evidence is there that Bad Dog is greedy? And question four, what evidence is there that Bad Dog is ugly? Okay, your assignment is on Teams now, so have a look at that. So far this week, your work has been fantastic, so keep it up, guys, and I will see you soon.